Good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Spot Tuesday. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Spot Tuesday. <laughs> I just thought, let me share it first before I show up. Hold on one second. Oh, I'm showing up. <laughs> hey, Yuzamaka, how you doing? Good evening or good afternoon from where you are. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Fantastic, fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, bless you. I'm trying to share, share the video. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. okay, let me let me come. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? <laughs> Good evening. Oh, hi, Abby. How are you doing as well? And hi, Shola. Hi, Funke. Thank you so much for joining. Signing in, but in my mentoring class. Oh, bless you, Akunsumi. Thank you so much. I know sometimes with these live videos it's um and webinars, it's quite... um You have to kind of put them in your schedule, isn't it? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. How are you guys all doing? I trust you've had a, a great, great um Tuesday. Mine has been quite busy. I've literally just come back from a, a governor's meeting the school governor's meeting so it's been quite quite busy um but all good all good all good all good okay good so i think we should just get going it's, it's um it's 9 p.m and i don't want to keep you guys um waiting or hold you know waiting for too long so let's let's start let's start what we're going to talk about today is cyberbullying and the reason why i kind of um thought about talking about cyberbullying is because recently on itv here um um a parent, um, they, it was, they had an interview on a parent who I think was just during the half term, her 14 year old daughter killed herself um, um, the, with the effect, this was in effect of cyberbullying. She had been having um, harassing um, text messages um, and just constant, constant harassments um, on, on, her, on her text messages and apparently um, this was after she had died that they found out from the text messages that it was all to do with there was this um, boyfriend she had um, or ex, I would call him an ex-boyfriend now who would just kept on sending her nasty messages. And one of the dilemmas in this stuff is that the parents didn't really didn't really know. She didn't even know. She's got siblings. None of them even kind of picked up that this is what she was going through. It was after she had died that her friends now came and told the, the mom that, you know, there was, you know, people have been kind of harassing her and stuff like that. And it was so sad to watch. Yeah, Shola, you said it's sad. It was so, so sad to even see, because it's still very raw um, to the mom. You could just see the, you could, you could feel the pain. I, I was in tears myself just watching her. Um, because this, her daughter, 14 year old, very confident daughter. So it wasn't as if, okay, the, the daughter was somebody who was kind of secluded somewhere. This was a very confident girl, but probably just had her, her emotions mixed up and probably just hung on to every word this guy, you know, was always saying. And apparently at the end, what they now found out that triggered the whole thing was, in one of the last messages that he sent, he told her, why don't you go hang yourself? And her response was, okay. Oh, Whew. that was deep. That, I just thought to myself, wow. And I think for the parents and for the siblings, they're all upset because they upset that they didn't know. They didn't, they didn't see the signs. That's why they're upset. And I thought it's important. Let's talk about this and also give you a few examples of signs that you should watch out for. Because as the mom was saying as well on the, t on the, on the interview, hi T, how are you doing? Good, good. Nice to have you on board. As the mom was saying is that a lot of times you just assume, oh, people that kill themselves are people who probably they didn't really have much of a life. They didn't really have loving family around them. But this was totally opposite. She had siblings. They all had, you know, they were close, but she kept some things to herself. And this can happen in any family. This can happen in any family. So we shouldn't kind of think to ourselves and say, well, my daughter or my son will never do this. So I don't even need to know about it or I don't even need to talk about it. Hi, Doni. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. Good evening. So it's something that we should. And for, for me, what I took from that, what I took from that is that we should arm ourselves with the right information. Arm yourselves with the right information and talk to your children about this. There is no more assumptions you don't gain by assuming. You can't just assume, oh, this is never going to happen. And then you don't talk about it. Yes, 
we're praying it never happens, we, we believe in it never happens, but we've got to do the wise thing about it and actually talk about it. We've got to do the wise thing about it and learn more about it. We've got to do the wise thing about it and be very vigilant, really, honestly. We have to be very, very vigilant about what we see, the changes we see in them. A lot of changes that we see in our teenagers, yes, you know, normal teenage moody behaviors, can, they can fluctuate and stuff like that, but still be on the watch out, still be on the lookout, just still observe. Don't use the excuse of you're so busy and then ignore what your child or your children are going through. We, at the end of the day, if anything happens, and I'm not saying anything would happen, but if anything happens, that job, that business, whatever it is that you're chasing, will be so irrelevant to you. When you know the importance, the, you, we brought these children to this world. We have to take, we have to, we have to step up to 120% to make sure that we do our best in protecting them and in reaching out to them and in talking to them. Don't assume that the school is doing it for you. The school is only going to do what they can do. As parents, we have so much of a responsibility on our teenagers. And I'm telling you because honestly speaking, there is that trend that after primary school, we tend to kind of poop, slip a little bit. Oh, no, they're growing. They know what they're doing. No, they don't. The only thing that changes mostly is the way we now talk to them about these things. But it doesn't mean that we should get away from those things or not talk to them about these things. We've got to talk to them about this. The mom, this mom, the, the mom who her daughter died was just so, she just didn't understand it. She just didn't understand it because she thought she knew everything about the girl. She, she did notice, she did say something, which I want to point out. She did say something that the daughter was constantly on the phone. I said constantly, constantly, constantly on the phone. She noticed that. Um, but these are, these are why we need to talk about this. And put a little bit, put some restrictions in place. Because our children are not as matured as they think. Do you know what I mean? They are not as matured. Yes, Shola agrees. We have so responsibility for our children. Exactly. They're not as matured as they think. So don't just leave them to their mobile phones just indefinitely. I think that's one of the things that we need to nip in the board. Don't just leave them to their phones. And if you want to do it where it's so effective, do it together. This is one of the things I, I've spoken about sometime. I think, Shola, I think it was in the webinar that we had some time ago, where I said, you know what, some evenings I just say, okay, everybody bring your phones, even my phone, let's put them down here. We keep them all to one side and that's it. Because you don't want your child going to bed, because this is another thing that happens. They, they, you know, you don't want your child going to bed, reading all these messages, nasty messages going on, and that's what they're going to sleep on and wake up first thing in the morning and that's what they see. We don't want that. Because at the end of the day, this is not a generation, this is not a, a society now where we're saying, where we're saying, oh, don't go outside because we don't want people to, to you know, to harm you. Right in their house, right in your house, through this mobile phone, things can happen. So it's important that we, we take that time out. Do you see what I mean? Hi, Tammy, how are you? Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining. So it's important that we, we really look into this. So I, I said, let's actually start with what's actually the definition of cyberbullying. And this is one of the definitions that I, I picked up from the, from, the, from the internet. I know we know what it is, but sometimes it's nice to just kind of spell it out and um, see what it says here. It says cyberbullying. I don't know if I should turn this around and see if you can see what, I, what I'm seeing here. Cyberbullying. Let me try it. If it doesn't work. Uh-huh. So cyberbullying. See if you can see that. Yeah. Cyberbullying is when a child, preteen or teen, is tormented, threatened, harassed, Humiliate, humiliated, embarrassed, or otherwise targeted by another child, preteen or teen using the internet, interactive and digital technologies, or even mobile phones. That is what cyber is. So cyberbullying really is mostly on the internet, mostly on, on the phones as well. Um, and it's actually done by other other teenagers, other other tweens, other preteens, other children. It's not something that when you come to adults doing stuff, that's different. But this is to do with, hi, Dirin, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. We're talking about cyberbullying today. We're talking about cyberbullying. So it's, it's something that is done actually between children, between teenagers, between peers. So it actually affects our teens more than anything else because these are their mates. These are people who are their age, 
age, in their age ranges, actually doing this. And so it affects them more. And guess what, parents? It is one of the hardest things that our teenagers talk about. Yes. It is one of the hardest things that our teenagers talk about. You're going to be very lucky if they even tell you that they're being bullied. You'll be very, very lucky if they tell you that they're being bullied. Because honestly speaking, sometimes, guys, with bullying, it's when they are affected by this self-bullying, they're victims of self-bullying, it makes them lose confidence. It makes them lose their dignity. It makes them lose their self-respect. So it's not something they're just going to brag around and talk about. They're not going to talk about it, but you're going to notice these signs. And I'm going to share about, I think I got about five or six signs that we should just look out for um, in terms of cyberbullying, if your child has been affected by it or not. Okay, so let's look at this. I think I shared it here. Um, let me see if I can share it. If not, I'll just read it out. Bear with me a second. Hey, Kay, how are you doing? Wow. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Spots Tuesday. <laughs> welcome. Hold on. So let, let's look at some warning signs. Some warning signs. Can, can you see my screen? It's a bit definitely clearer than last time that I had it. And hi, Genevieve as well. Thank you so much, Juju. Thank you so much for joining. See some warning signs that we can look out for. Um, um, for This is warning signs. If you notice any of these kind of signs, then those are little signs that could be related to cyberbullying. Um, sometimes they appear nervous, nervous when receiving a text or message. So you see them, they get a phone call or they get a message and all of a sudden they start appearing a bit nervous. Those, that's a sign. Or they seem uneasy about going to school. You know, sometimes you, you, you notice that your child has been so cool about going to school. It's no big deal. Oh, they're just going to go. Okay, make sure they're ready. And then all of a sudden, sometimes they just don't want to go to school anymore. Something may be happening. They have unwillingness to share information about online activities. And this happens when parents now want to get involved. And you see that your, your teenager or your preteen is not wanting to share that online information with you. Um, the unwillingness to do it. Um, they have to share it, it's my own opinion. Um, but when they, when they have that unwillingness to share it, then something else could be behind it. There's also unexplained anger, you know, especially after going on, online. Just unexplained, just getting erratic, you know, just being erratic, just un unnecessary, or even depression. So, especially unexplained, it's not, something so small leads them to just be so angry, especially after they've gone online or after being on their phone. Those are warning signs. Another warning sign that I have here is um, uh, abruptly shutting off or walking away after using the computer, uh, withdrawing from friends and family in real life. That's another sign. Then this one I saw here was a bit, I thought, wow, I need to look at, look into that one. Un unexplained stomach, stomach aches or headaches, just all of a sudden, unexplained stomach aches or, or headaches. If they start complaining of that, then it's probably that stress of thinking about it so much. Um, trouble sleeping at night, unexplained weight loss or gain, um, and then suicidal thoughts or attempts or suicidal These are all signs that we need to look out for um, in regards to cyberbullying. These are kind of signs that we need to look out for. And I know as a parent, that's the, the last thing that you're thinking about. That's the last thing that you ever, ever wish or even expect that your child may be going through. But honestly speaking, as our children are out there in the world today, they're out of our homes. They're in environments where they're mixing with other kind of children, other backgrounds, other um, family um, dynamics. You know, you just never know um, who they've gotten involved with, who is saying nasty things to them. You just never know. So look out for these signs. Look out for these signs and also just be aware that you need to talk to them. And that's the next part I'm coming to. Does anybody have any questions so far on the signs that we read? Does anybody have any questions so far? Hi, Pauline. How are you doing? So we've got Pauline as well just joined us. Thank you so much, Pauline. Thank you so much. A co-parent partner. Thank you so much. Shola is around as well. Thank you so, so much, guys. So if you've got any questions on the warning signs, then um, let's have the questions and we can share them. Pauline is here to answer. Shola Alabi is also here as well that can help us as well because they, they also, um, like me, um, help parents a lot. They're parents, um, partners, support parents in in um, success for their children, both in academics and in real life as well. So this is this is something that we're doing together. Um, and the more we share information about this to parents, the more we arm parents with the right information. Because we don't want to be in situations where, oh, had I known, 
Oh, why didn't I? Why didn't I just think? Oh, I saw that sign. Oh, I didn't. It didn't even register. You don't want to be in that situation. So it's important that we we arm ourselves with the right information. That's something that I definitely, definitely um, um, have to emphasize so much for all of us, including myself. All of us that have um, teenagers and preteens, definitely. And the earlier we start, guys. The earlier we start, the better. Because if you don't start talking to your preteens at the age of 10, at the age of 11, if you don't start talking to them about um, social media, the internet, um, emails, if you don't start talking to them about this now, or you don't start the habit of actually every now and then, let's have a look at your phone, you know, it's, you know, as they get older, it will still be easier to do. But if you don't do it when they're 10, 11, 12, and then when they're 16, you start saying, bring your phone. I want to have a look at your phone. Even they will be like, oh, what? You know, it's like, OK, it won't it won't it won't bring true to them. And that's where resistance can happen. So the earlier you start to 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 have these things, the better especially their online activities. Exactly, Shola. Keeping a very close eyes on things. And guess what, um, parents? Um, Shola, I definitely agree with you. Shola says, keeping a close, a very close eyes on things, especially their online activities. And the, 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 one of the other things that I was going to say about this is that do it in a, not in a very kind, not, don't do it in a detective kind of mode. Do it in a Phew, okay, guys, what's going on, on the on, in the online world? Okay, I know what's going on in our home life, but what's going on in, in, on the on, in the online world? Bring it in like that. Honestly speaking, bring it in like this. Discussing the boundaries. Exactly. Hey, Chioma, how are you doing as well? Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. So you've got to, one of these, so now we've talked about the signs. We've de defined cyberbullying. We've talked about the signs. Now let's talk about what you can do as a parent about it. The first thing you can do is actually talk about it. You agree. <laughs> Falling agrees with Shola as well. Yes. Let me tell you, in talking about this, this and this is one thing that I, I, I observed as well. When you, when, you, when you notice some of these signs in your children, don't go and start asking them, are you being bullied? Is somebody bullying you? Are you, are you a victim of bullying? As soon as you call the word bullying, that's a shot down word. That's a shot down word. They're not going to admit to you that, oh, yes, I've been bullied. That's, they, they, I'm talking about teenagers now, the preteens and teenagers. Once you ask them, have you been bullied? Most very, very likely, 99.9%, .9 they will tell you no. Because you are coming at them, you're asking them from that very heavy point, are you being bullied? No, don't ask them, are you being bullied? Start to ask them about their feelings. If they're saying they don't feel like going to school, why don't you all of a sudden feel like going to school? What has changed? What has changed? What has changed? Or how are you feeling about school? Why don't you want to go to school? What is wrong? You know, you start to talk to them on a personal, personal, because it's almost as if you want to show them that you care so much. It's not about the bullying now. You want to, you want to get into the question. You want to get into the answers. You're not going to get to the answers right away by screaming, are you being bullied? Let me know if you're being bullied because I'm going to go to your school. Go, go. Once you start on that level, you have shut down the conversation. You have literally shut down the conversation. So start with things like, how are you feeling in school? How are your friends, how are your friends being with you? Are you still friends with most of your friends? If they say, that's when they can start saying things like, oh no, I don't talk to so, so, so anymore. And then you go, oh wow, why? They're not being, are they being mean? So it's those kind of words that you start to use. If somebody is being mean to them all of a sudden, that's a signal. That's a little signal there that you can tap into. But rather than going in there to say, oh, are you being bullied? Start with those kind of little things, little things, you know. Are you, you know, are they treating, you know, are they being mean? Are they using, are they using words on you? Because another thing about teenagers and words is some words they say, oh, mom, he was just, that was just banter. I'm like, I'm like, excuse me, what's this banter thing? There's a thin line. What are you guys referring to as banter? But for a child who is undergoing or who is a victim of cyberbullying, their perspective is very important. So it's important that we don't minimize it. Or, expand, or exaggerate it. It's important that we come to their level. We want to understand what it is that they are going through. That's one of the keys that we've got to do. So come to them in that very calm method in talking to them. And if they don't answer anything that day, that's fine. Leave it till the next day. Don't go on and on. You must not get an answer the same day. No. Start very gently. And when they know that they can now 
confide in you and talk to you, they will let you know. And I think for me personally, I think that is why it's also important that we we make sure that we have friends, friends who can talk to our teenagers as well. Because sometimes, honestly speaking, even when you go through research and stuff, we are the last people sometimes that they want to actually tell us about a specific problem, depending on how you approach them in the first place. So it's important that you have other people around you that you know they can confide in as well in case they don't talk to you. I'm, we're not saying it's everything they're going to tell you because a lot of times it's not. I, I talk to a lot of teenagers. It's not everything that they tell their parents. That's just a simple truth. And it's nothing to do, it's nothing to do with you being a bad parent. Don't please don't take it that way. It's nothing to do with you being a bad parent. It's just sometimes when it's in terms of communication, they kind of already expect some kind of responses from you that they know will not really work for them. And that is why they won't tell you in those kind of situations. It's not that you're a bad parent. It's just sometimes those are the kind of things that happen, especially in, in terms of communication. So talk to them. That's one of the main things that I have here is talk to them, but make sure you don't come too directly about the bullying. Come in an indirect way. People being mean, are people treating you right? Come in that way because you're coming from a caring point rather than a defensive. Oh, if they're bullying you, let me know. I'll come to the school. You need to differentiate between those two and come in in the right way. And you've got to work with them, to be honest. If you now find out that they are being bullied, if you now find out that this cyberbullying is definitely working, then it's time for you to actually work with them. This is a case where because they're involved, because they are involved, they need to know that you're on their side. They need to know that you're on their side. It's not, a, it's not a time where you start talking to their friends. It's not a time where you start telling their friends, oh, are you being bullied as well? Oh, are you doing this as well? No, because this is so personal to them. This is so personal. This is so personal. Pauline said the children need to hear the same message echoed by others. Exactly. Exactly. They need to hear that. They need to hear that. They need to hear that. Pauline is so right. They need to hear that. So work with them and work confidentially with them. Don't go and start spreading it to their own friends because at the end of the day, they've got to go back to school. They've got to go back to school and face people, even their friends as well. So you don't want to start asking their friends, oh, are you being bullied? Oh, did you know your friend was being bullied? Don't, don't go there. Work with them and the school as well on, in this case. Another point I have here for parents is calm down. If you now find out that the, part of the, um, the bullying has been involved, just calm down. Don't, because when you, sometimes our reactions actually make it worse. Our reactions make it worse, so they refuse to open up. They refuse to tell you more things. So you must learn. I know it's very painful when we know about it, but learn to calm down. Learn to calm down. Okay. And then my last point I've got here is just be wise in your response. Don't start talking about it. I think it, it comes down to working with them. Be wise in it. Don't start making too much force about it. Be wise in it. Work together. Because at the end of the day, with, with cyberbullying victims and even bullying victims, because they're, such, they're victims, they have lost a lot of self-respect. They have lost a lot of self-dignity. And this is what we want to help them restore back. So whilst we're talking to the school about this, like, you know, and especially if we know the sources, while we're talking to the school and everything about this, we need to be working with them personally as well to make sure that they remain on our side, to make sure that they trust us, that we are constantly, consistently on their side. Because at the end of the day, you want to restore that self-respect. At the end of the day, you want to restore that self-dignity. Because honestly speaking, a teenager with no self-respect, no self-dignity, no confidence, they don't strive very, very well. It affects their academics. Um, Pauline and um, Shola, I'm sure you guys can agree with me on that. It affects their academics. So sometimes you see such a smart child who is so brainy, all of a sudden not interested anymore in their, in their schoolwork. The, those are signs that you need to look out for. So as parents, let's not get so, um, so busy that we don't see those signs. That would be such a big regret that we will live the rest of our lives for. Don't be too busy to notice your children. Don't be too busy to look out for the signs. Don't be too busy to talk to your children. Hi, Jane. Jane, thank you so much for joining. And Fumi, thank you so much for joining too. Don't be too busy to watch out for these signs. Because at the end of the day, you have a very, very core responsibility for your preteens, your teenagers, and your children. And the earlier you start, the better. 
talk to them about these 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 issues i've had to share this story as well with my kids as well i spoke we spoke about it and then you know i think my son was saying but why did she why didn't she talk to somebody that's what he was asking why didn't she talk to somebody you've got to be able to talk and if you don't but if you don't share these things with your children how will they respond when they are faced in those situations and shola says any change you observe needs to be looked at yes any change it needs to be looked at and looked at in a wise way i agree with that as well so it's 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 very important that we do that and there are many things i want to talk to teens I just, it's going to be my next topic that i'm going to talk um to teenagers about i'm going to set up a webinar to talk about it especially now because it's still fresh i'm going to just remind them about things you know sometimes with teenagers they know these things but you've got to keep reminding them and that's i think i shared it in a post where i said don't get tired of reminding them don't get tired of talking to them even when they go to the point of oh mom i've heard this before oh dad yes here we go again just keep talking <laughs> keep talking keep telling them because they they can never know enough just keep telling them keep talking to them and you know i share with them i tell them don't give out your personal details um think carefully before you post pictures Think very carefully. How how are you the way you're treating someone? If someone treats you that way, how are you going to feel? And when you see somebody else treating somebody so poorly, what do you do? Do you stand by? That's the question I ask. And even when I talk to teenagers as well, I always ask, what do you do in those kind of situations? Do you help out or do you keep quiet or laugh with the bully? So these are kind of things that we just need to keep reminding them, knowing that the way they treat others will always come back to them. And it's important that they treat people nicely. The lady on the, um, in the interview was also saying how we need to start promoting kindness more. A lot of reality TV and stuff. It's the wicked people, the bad people that get more press. So it almost becomes so normal to be, to be horrible to people. But we can't, we can't allow that anymore. We, we shouldn't. But that's what is so popular on TV. That's why, to be honest, huh. TV, I've just, I've, it's almost like an, ex, it's almost like a, an extinct thing in, in, for me personally in my, in my house. Honestly, I just don't do much with TV at all. But when you watch all these things, these things are normalizing a lot of nastiness that is going on. And that's why cyberbullying and things like that are on the increase. Um, so as parents, I think let us always be on the lookout. Let us always arm ourselves with the right information and keep talking to our teenagers, keep talking to our preteens, keep talking to our children. You know, sometimes some parents allow their children to to have their phones overnight. A lot of times when you even realize your children, you might think they've gone to bed at 10. But if they have their phones, they've probably not gone to bed. They're probably still on the phone, <laughs> isn't it? They're probably still on the phone. So take their phones from them. Let us have a corner in the house where we all keep our phones overnight. Then in the mornings, because I'm a very early person, in the mornings I can take the phones and go back to their rooms because sometimes they use it, most of the time, they use it as an alarm. So that's kind of my method. I'll tell them, okay, before you sleep, because they even want to sleep, the, the phone is on the bed. If you allow them, their phones are on their bed. So we've got to... Take action, okay? Let's take actions and and um, and do something about it. And it's never too late. Never too late. Thank you, Chioma. Two Chiomas, Chioma Stephanie and Chioma Owu. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. So let's take these actions. And it's never, never too late. Uh, Pauline says, good idea for the phones. Yes, honestly. I, I started doing that. Then I stopped. Then I went back again to it because for me personally even i needed to do it for myself because i thought okay there's a time now come on no more no more phone let's just let's let's leave it to the side so i had to kind of involve myself in it and because i involved myself in it it made it better you know the kids were, were able to say okay at least she's not picking on me you know, you know? so just, let's just take it away then at night or very early in the morning i can go and put it back in their rooms because this the alarms so that the alarm the alarm in the in the on the phone can wake them up but it's important we talk to them about it even when we're taking their phones tell them the reason why you're taking their phone don't just say i'm taking your phone because i don't want you to do this i don't no 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 talk to them have a conversation with them it's all about that communication when you communicate better to them when you communicate to them on a matured level then they understand they know wow okay you know what mom has a reason you know what yeah mom has a reason mom has a reason and you want them to be able to to talk more to you and hobby as well about it or hobby and wife about it you know mom and dad about it so it's so so important lead by example yes honestly i'm not <laughs> lead by example i try to especially with the phone i do try sometimes i i still have my phone but i've told them that i've <laughs> I've got the, all of us, all my phones are downstairs, but I'm still downstairs, so I can still have my phone until I now go to bed. 
um, and then I, and then I can, then I can do that. So I hope you guys have been able to um, get something out of this. Um, Communication is vital, sis Anne says, yes. And then Fola, what do you say? Hi, Fola, how are you doing? I'm not sure I said hi when you came on. Thank you so much. Whom had a talk about cyberbullying with my 13-year-old today. Some people, some children can be so mean. Yes, exactly. They can be so mean. And I don't know, is it that, do, do, don't they realize that they're being mean? Or do they not think about it? You know, the, the, the last words, when this lady said the last words her child sent in the text, oh, my heart sunk. I mean, even talking about it now, my heart sunk. The guy told her on the, on the text, why don't you go hang yourself? And her response was okay. Whew. It's, it's sad. It's sad. And this was a very confident, confident girl. So let's never take, don't take your children for granted. Don't take, don't assume, I think that's the word, don't assume that they know it all. Don't assume that it's not going to affect them. Don't assume they will never be victims. Don't assume it. Rather than assume, just arm them with the right information and arm yourself with the right information as well. Honestly speaking, I, sh I, I don't think there's any parent right now that should be saying, oh, I'm not into all this computer stuff. I'm not into all digital. Guess what, parents? We are in the digital age and this digital age is not going back. Is going forward. So more digital things are going to be coming up front. So we have got to be in front. We have got to be in front. Don't escape the digital world. Be part of it. Don't say, oh, I've heard so much about WhatsApp. I'm not doing WhatsApp. Uh, my children cannot do WhatsApp. Taking your children away from the social, social, uh, social media. Yes, people, parents have a different view, different views on that. But I tell you something, digital, the digital world is here to stay. All we can do is arm them with the right information. Taking all that stuff out from them, oh, saying they, they shouldn't do WhatsApp, they shouldn't have a phone, it's not really going to work. Because honestly, the next minute they get their, their, their hands on a phone, they will do the, undo, the undoable. Honestly speaking, they will do the undoable. So rather, introduce them to the phones. Introduce them to what they need to know in the, in the, in the digital world but also arm them with the right information. It's wisdom, applied wisdom that works. It's not depriving them of the phones that is going to do the job. No way. To be honest, that's my, op my, that's my own opinion. It's not that because I, I have, uh, to be honest, I work with a lot of teenagers and taking the phone uh, or banning them from using a phone is, is, not, is not the answer. It's not the answer because they always find other ways. Hi, Ronke Posh. How you doing? <laughs> Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. So um, then Sis Anne says, it's so sad hearing you talk about it regarding tech sense. I know. I know. But that's, that's when I just remember that. I just, my, I just shiver. I'm, I'm, it's, it, it wasn't good. I just, her, her reply of okay. And then she went and actually did it. And so it's so, so sad. So please, parents, let us keep arming ourselves with the right information and keep talking to our, our teens as well, honestly speaking. Um, I do a lot of that as well with teenagers. So if you do need tips on how to, what kind of, how to approach them and how to talk to them, let me know. Let me know and I can, I can help out in one way or the other. And Shola is here as well. Ronke Posh is here. Pauline Alabi is here as well. These are all very amazing parent partners who help parents in amazing, amazing ways. And we all, all learn from each other. So honestly speaking, if you've got any questions, they're here to answer and they, will, they would love to help as well. So that's not a problem at all. Some are not ready though, not needed yet either. Yes, no, very true. Yes, some, some kids, yes, some kids are not ready to even have the phones and that's fine. And you know, and when you know it, you just use that, use, use that opportunity and don't give them the phone if they're not ready. There's no point of if they're not ready, then you now passing them onto the, on, you know, on, on, you know, giving them a phone. So if they're not ready for it, yeah, don't force it on them because every kid grows in their own way. Every kid has their own, interest in their own way they will grab they will kind of get into it later on and if it's your your phone they want to use then fine let them use your phone and, and that's actually a great way yes it's not many kids um maybe when she goes off to secondary school yes exactly when she goes off to secondary school yeah then she will need that more and to be honest that's kind of where it all kind of really really does that um in primary school to be honest i don't know what they what they're really using phones for um in primary schools it's, unless it's, it's my, with my daughter because she walks quite a long distance um walking back home sometimes she has her phone so that she can let us know when she's where she where she's at and then when she comes back into the house so that's the kind of reason why we have the phones uh she hogs mine can't imagine giving her one yet okay <laughs> 
I agree. Ronke Posh, secondary school is, is it for us. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Yes. My daughter just got hers now because of the distance that she walks back from home, um, from school when she comes back, when she comes back um, in the afternoon. So that's kind of the reason why we gave her um, one to use for that. So that's, that's cool. Yeah. So, but everyone, you know, your children, you know, your child, you know, what works best. This is not, um, uh, you, you know, for what, when, when uh, people like us talk and share um, parental tips and stuff, it's for you to take what you, you know works or what you know can work. And, but if you don't have that information, how would you know what works? So it's all about just sharing that information and helping out in any way um, um, possible. So that's kind of where we are. Thank you so much, um, Akin Rapong. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. But we have got to, what well, we've got, well, we've been here for like 30 minutes now. So I think it's almost time for us to hit the road and go to bed. But I just wanted to say thank you so much, guys, for all of you that have joined. I hope you found this very, very um, useful. I, I know personally I have found it very, very, very useful because a lot of times when I, when I talk, um, the, some other ideas just come out. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, <laughs> you, can, you get some aha moments as well. And, um, but remember, your child's perspective is actually very important. I, I wrote that down. I, did, I don't think I said that, but yeah, their perspective is very important. So as I said in the video, rather than shouting, oh, are you being bullied? Talk to them from their point of view. Let them share what it is that is wrong with them or what they're experiencing in school. Um, he's also a parent partner. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Akin Rapo is also a parent partner. Yes, he's phenomenal. Yes, exactly. He is. Um, I think, I, I, yes, I do follow him. Yes, yes, he is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, great, great, great having all of you on board. Um, as always, I'm always, I always appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, we will be here again next Tuesday, Spots Tuesday, supporting parents of tweens and teens. Thank you for your time and confirming my approach today. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. If he says, I've been a victim where someone watched one of my videos and told me I was ugly, so I should go and kill myself. I was not, you see, and even as an adult, can you imagine that, Ify? Yeah, even as an adult, you see, some people are just nasty over out there. Some people are really, really nasty, yeah. And as an adult, you know, you've, you've had to even, you know, be strong about it, not to talk of a child. And that's why we need to add them up. Thank you so much, sis Anne. Very useful information. Thank you so much. Yep. <laughs> Ronke Poch said, yeah, what? Yep. It happened to Ify on YouTube. Yeah, it did. It did happen to her on YouTube. Yep, it did. <laughs> yeah, it did. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Any more questions, you can still put them in the comment boxes, uh, in the comment box or comment boxes <laughs> for everyone. If you, you can still put them, still write them down in the comment box and we will get back to you. Or you can inbox any of us. Um, inbox Shola Alabi, Ronke Posh, um, Pauline Lehman, if you're, you know, if you guys are friends with them, inbox them, inbox me as well. And we can get going. We disregard the naysayers. Exactly. Yeah, those are one of my tips for when I'm going to be talking to teenagers. So I will share. I will share with all of you um, the webinar. I'm going to do a webinar with teens. Um, I think I will separate it: do tweens and then do teens. I will do something about that for um, for cyberbullying, just to remind them and just to kind of um, um, let them know that we care so much for them and we don't want them being a victim to cyberbullying. Okay, all right. Have a great, great evening, guys, and a great week. And guess what, guys? Tomorrow is the first of March. <laughs> February has ended, so you're not going to have February 2017 anymore. It's now going to be March the 1st, 2017. I can't even believe where the time is going. But guess what, guys? Let's keep going and let's keep rooting for each other. I'm rooting for you guys all the way. I will share the link. Yes, I will share the link. I will share the link for that. Definitely, I will share the link. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great evening. I love you guys with all of my heart. Rooting for your rise all the way, as I always say. Take care and you, you come in here on this platform on Tuesday, on every, every Tuesday so far, honestly, has been a blessing to me. I thank you so, so much for that. Thank you for my, to our parent partners, Ronke Posh, uh, um, uh, Shola Labi, Pauline Lehman, and Akim Furo as well. Thank you so much to all of you that have joined me, um, joined us here on this platform, supporting parents of twins and teens. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great evening and a fantastic start to the month of March. <laughs> Thank you. Bye guys. See you later. Good night. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.